starting off this project with the Kumiko. And there's basically two different parts of Kumiko, the grid and the infill. You start off with the grid. And I made this sled specifically to make making the grid not only quicker, but much more accurately and efficiently. I have a separate video fully describing how to make this sled and how to use it to make different types of grids if you're interested. For this kind of grid, you need two different types of pieces. And once I have them all cut, I can start assembling them. Assembly is pretty simple, but the last pieces can get pretty tight sometimes. So I like to put them all in halfway and then tap them in place. This hammer has a soft plastic head on it, so it won't dent the wood. With the grids done, I can move on to the infill pattern. For this type of pattern, I need to cut a 30 degree point on one end and a 60 degree point on the other end of these pieces. And I'm doing that with the help of my Kumiko jigs, which gave really accurate and clean results. If you're interested in trying Kumiko, I make Kumiko kits, which are a great way to get started and learn the fundamentals of Kumiko. And I also teach online classes. Both of those are linked in the description if you're interested. I need a lot of pieces to make this project happen. And what you're seeing here is enough to fill one panel. I have eight panels to fill, which means I need about 400 of these pieces. But once I had them all cut, I can start putting the patterns together. I need to cut these panels into different shapes for the fins of the koi. And to hold all these pieces together, I'm using epoxy. I first poured the epoxy into the silicone mold, and I added this piece of wood so that it takes up space so that I can use less epoxy. Then I use the heat gun to pop all the bubbles, and I can add the panel in. These panels aren't totally flat, so I added these pieces of wood on top, then 8th inch plywood, and a weight on top of that to hold it all flat as the epoxy dries. I have a sketch of what the final piece will look like in my sketchbook, but I needed full size pieces of the koi so that I can use them as templates. I transferred my sketch onto a piece of plywood and then cut out all the individual pieces of the koi on the bandsaw. All the pieces of the koi fish form are done now I need the strips that are going to go around it and create the actual koi fish. And for that, I'm using this. So this is cut off from another project where I needed half inch plywood, but I only had three quarter. So I resawed the plywood and ended up with these thin strips. These are a little too wide, so I just got to cut them down and we can start making the koi fish. This is two plies thick, which for this project gives the perfect amount of flexibility and durability. I'm ripping them at half inch wide strips and I'll use them to make molds for the koi fish bodies. I first glue the body template using Starbond CA glue to this piece of plywood covered in sheathing tape. Now I can glue the strips around the form using hot glue. Sheathing tape doesn't like many things being stuck to it, so these templates pop right off. I made a few forms of the bodies and the fins. I didn't like how the fins turned out, so I ended up not using them. I'm filling these about halfway with clear epoxy, and once that hardens, I'll add the colored epoxy. This is pretty important because if I just added the color, it would soak into the wood and wouldn't look very good. Doing it this way allows the clear epoxy to soak into the wood and gives a much finer line between the wood and colored epoxy. This is the first time I'm mixing different colors together, and I learned a pretty important tip. If you want to do something similar, add the color that you want least of first. You can see when I add the white here, it pushes the orange out to the sides. And then I went back and filled in the orange because I actually wanted those shapes to be a little bit bigger. While I'm waiting for those to dry, I can cut out the fins. I'm tracing the templates on the back side of the Kumiko panels using a fine tipped marker. 
This is the only thing that I found that gave me a fine enough line and wrote well enough on the epoxy. After I cut them out, I gave them a light sanding to clean up the edges. I'm really happy with how these look at this point, but I need to edge band them so that they match the bodies. To do that, I'm just gluing on the same half inch strips that I used for the epoxy molds. Once I had the tail fins done, I can use the same exact process for the side fins. All of these fins will have to be cut to match the contours of the body, so I'm leaving plenty of material on the inside of the fins to allow me to do that. I got pretty nervous right here because I thought I accidentally glued this fin to my workbench. At this point, the koi bodies are ready to be removed from the backing board, and this is just such a satisfying process. I found the best way to clean off the hot glue and epoxy that leaked under the molds is with a sharp knife. It still goes by very slow, and if you have any tips on how to make this quicker, please let me know in the comments. Throughout the project, I wasn't really sure how I was going to fit the fins to the body, but this is what I came up with. I covered the back of the fins with blue tape and positioned the body on it how I wanted it to fit. Then I traced the body with a razor blade and cut out the tape. Now I know I need to remove this section. I'm cutting right on the tape line with the bandsaw. And this won't give me a perfect fit on the first time. Well, actually it did for one of them and I got pretty lucky with that one. But for the rest of them, I marked the area of the body where the tail meets it with pencil. This is going to act like carbon paper. So with the tail in place, I can wiggle it back and forth and the pencil rubs off on the high spots of the tail, marking what areas I need to remove. This is a really tight spot to get into and sandpaper wasn't really working out. So instead I'm running them backwards on the bandsaw blade. You can really fine tune with this technique and it worked out really well. Assembly is pretty straightforward. I'm gluing all the parts together using CA glue. And I was at first concerned about the strength, but you can see here it holds up just fine. And I'm working on top of sheathing tape, so when glue squeezes out of the backside, it won't accidentally glue the koi to my workbench. With the koi put together, I can finish the wood. I'm going around the edges with a foam brush, putting on a couple coats of water-based polyurethane. The last thing to do to the koi is to mount them, and for that, I need a circle. I'm drilling a hole in the center of this panel, but not all the way through. Moving over to the table saw, I can use this jig to cut out the circle. There is a dowel on the top side, which goes into the hole I just drilled, and runners in the bottom, which run in the miter slots of the saw. Now I can spin the board around that dowel, removing all the corners. I'm stopping partway through so that I can move all the cutoffs away from the blade to prevent kickback. I was debating if I should use half inch plywood to match the thickness of the koi but three quarter inch is far more stable. So to lighten some of the visual weight, I'm cutting a chamfer on the back edge. Throughout this project, I knew I wanted to add colored epoxy to the circle, but I wasn't able to decide on a color. I figured blue like water is the only way to go and won't attract too much attention away from the koi. There's two circles here because I'm actually making two of these kumikoi. 
And if you're interested in owning one, hang tight to the end of the video for more details. Once the epoxy dried, I painted the back and the edges with the same colored blue and attached a metal French cleat, which is how this is going to hang on the wall. To attach the koi, I first laid them out on the circle where I thought they would look best and marked their position with blue tape. Next, I sanded the circle and the back of the koi to rough up the surfaces and get better adhesion between the two pieces. I'm using epoxy to glue the two pieces together and a little bit goes a long way here. I wanted to make sure not to use too much so the epoxy doesn't squeeze out and show on the sides of the koi. Once I had the two in position, I clamped them overnight using some paper towels to protect the koi from the clamps. And the next morning, they were done. I've made a few kumiko and epoxy projects in the past, but this kumikoi is definitely my favorite. Like I mentioned earlier, this is available for sale, and if you're interested, it's linked in the top line of the description. Before you head out, I want to let you know that I have new merch. This is one of the new shirts, and you may be able to recognize what's on the back. It's another Kumiko and Epoxy project, but this is just one of the designs. I have a couple other new shirts available. I also have new stickers. Some of them feature some previous projects and some pretty recent ones. If you want to grab anything, be sure to check out the link down below, and I really appreciate your support. Thanks for watching this video, and I'll see you in the next one.